My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, once again, this show is being shot uh, December 15th, 2000. We're moving into 2001. We're moving into, is it the beginning of the new millennium? Is it one year into the new millennium? Does it matter? Does it matter what we call each day, each breath of our lives? And it really, in a way, it doesn't. What matters is that we experience the love and the beauty and the miracle of each breath. And that's, again, what Bridging Heaven and Earth, the show, is about tonight. To once again bring the wonder and the joy and the love of this human life and the, and the, the experience we all can share together when we recognize the true connection between us all and, and experience that love together. What, what a bounty and what a, what a Garden of Eden we could be on in this extraordinary planet where really everything is here and everything is available for us if we really understood that we were all brothers and sisters here. And, and if we could recognize, I mean, sometimes we think a miracle is the parting of the Red Sea, or the miracle is, is this or that or the other, or even the resurrection. Think of the miracle that in every morning, all of you out there, everyone watching the show looks in a mirror, and a consciousness looks back and looks into that mirror and says, boy, do you look good today? Do you look this today? Do you, did you comb your hair? Did you not comb your hair? What a miracle this whole experiment here is, is here. Here we are hurtling through space, floating on this incredible planet. And we, and we think of the presidential election, we think of all the things, all the dramas of our lives, but think of the miracle that we're hurtling through space on this incredible ball going millions and millions of miles an hour and still doing television shows and working and, and, and all the things we do and raising families and, and, and skipping in the park. That is such an extraordinary miracle that if any of us or all of us or any of us who do, recognize that any day of our lives, it would just transform us and transform us and transform us. And that's into a joyous experience, and that's what it's about. We all really, Muslim, Catholic, Jewish, anything, any religion, any color, any creed, people, all of us, all the human beings want to experience love and share love. That's it. And all the things that we see are different, are just misunderstandings of the true experience and the true oneness we truly are. So tonight, once again, we have a show where that oneness, where that connection is going to be talked about and, and expressed in, in another way. We've, this is the 109th show, and we've had extraordinarily numbers of different ways, of different spokes on the wheel to discuss that love and that oneness. And tonight we have a guest, Buddy Piper, who's a long-standing spiritual teacher. He was one of the pioneers of television. Uh, he travels the world alerting people to the miracles that are happening now, to the external miracles, to the, to the golden crosses, to the crop circles. His life is dedicated to, to that experience, to bring us all into that experience of, of brotherhood. And he's, just, he's a delightful man and he's had a tremendous amount of experience in sharing that love with everybody. And that's really the only thing his life is dedicated to. And then we have Randy Farback with us, who's an inspirational musician. He's uh, the coordinator of the Trans uh, Mission Meditation Group for the Santa Barbara area. Uh, and his words and his songs are, again, a way to, for that vibration of togetherness, of connectedness, to spread, to get, that, to get the love out. I mean, that's what the show's about, that's what Buddy's about, that's what Randy's about. And hopefully the people watching the show want to experience more love and share more love. And I know that's what everybody who's associated with the show, myself, the crew, all the people who call in, all the letters we get, all the emails, all the people who are supporting the foundation, it's all to spread that love. And we're just so delighted to have another chance to do that with you tonight. We're adding cities all over. We just have a commitment from one of the, our local friends here who wants, who's from France who wants to try to get it on in Europe and France. And we're just extraordinarily delighted with, with all the input we're getting. So please, as we normally do at this time, to just, to just surrender into that experience, to surrender into that love. Join me in a short meditation, then we'll come on with Randy and Buddy, and it's going to be another chance for us all to experience more of that love, and, and really that's what we're here for. So please join me.
Thank you. So settle in, open up. There's a lot of experience available tonight. So the first Randy set is The World Teacher. It was written by Randy Farback and Ann Sullivan, and it's performed by Randy. And it's a really beautiful song. Listen and just let it, let it in. His name is Maitreya, he's our brother and our friend, he is the world teacher, he now walks among men, he's the master of masters, the teacher of light, he gives gifts of plenty, he guides our inside, his name is my prayer, he's our brother. The teacher of love. He sends legions of helpers through the rainbow. He now calls upon us to stand in our glow. Gives gifts of plenty. Guides our inside because we are all brothers and the earth is one land. His name is Maitreya, he's our brother. Christ who stands beside us and not up above. His name is my trainer. Hi, that was great, Randy. Thank you. So we're on the set with Buddy. Hi, Buddy. Welcome. Hey, hi. I really enjoyed Randy. I had not yes. heard that song. You hadn't heard that? No, no it's, it's beautiful, beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. So when did you start traveling the world, just alerting people and sharing your love in that way? Well, I, I really uh, started about 1982 getting deeply involved in this, although I really started when I was about seven years old. So it's hard to bridge those two right. dates. Right. Since I'm 76 and uh, right. have had nothing but sheer joy in my life trying to uh, come to the information that you just spread on your opening here. You know, I don't have, I think, uh, if I may, uh, um, Alan, uh, I'd like to comment on the, on the wonderful idea you have here. I'm an idea person and I will tell you, you're way ahead of your time, but the time is coming to catch up with you. and. First of all, the operation you do here is the way we're going to work in the future. The energy came in at 2000, uh, the energy of cooperation, where the energy of competition is going out. And you will see movements just like you're doing this show. It's a joy for me to watch because I've been in production on shows all my life, too, in, in show business. And to see the warm professionalism, uh, people, the, I wouldn't call any of these people amateurs, they're just local people who are dedicated. 
And with that kind of movement, we can change this world. So what you're talking about will be done by those of us that most people have ever never known. It's a great joy to be part of that. I'm glad to be here tonight. So what was the trigger for you? Was there any specific incident that yeah. really, like, awakened you or just, you know, lit a fire under you or... Well, it happened when I was very young, as I said, and, can and I grew up on the plains of Kansas where I saw the wheat trucks go by, pile the wheat high in the elevators, pile it on the ground, I saw the rats getting fat. I'd pick up my little radio, this is long before television, and I'd hear that there's starvation on the planet. Now, I didn't have the logic at seven <clears throat> to understand what that, how you tied those two together. But the time I reached 13, when we usually started uh, developing our logic, I was able to see that we were, the government was paying us not to grow food in the United States. Made a lot of sense, right? <laughs> well, it didn't make it to me. <laughs> no, I, I was also So I asked, right. I asked my farmer friends, I, was, I live in the country, but we weren't farmers, my family. I said, how come you're not growing food? He said, the government's asking us not to. I said, you making a lot of money out of that? He said, no. Well, I said, somebody's got to be. And I said, that sounds like spreading starvation. Picked up my radio and it says starvation is increasing dramatically. So as you do as a teenager, you believe you can do anything. And if we didn't lose that idea, we certainly could do anything. Just had to pursue it. And I said to myself, if I ever grow up and figure a way to make a living, I will spend the rest of my life working to stop world hunger. That's what I said to myself and forgot it. Really, when you were seven? No, when I was 13. 13. Yeah, okay. when I was 13. Then I kind of knew what I right. thought I could do. Well, I was going to be an actor, and I was out on the plains of Kansas. That's what I wanted to do, and I had no idea how to. But Red Skelton, I can't tell the whole story because we wouldn't have the time, but Red Skelton came into my life because he had an Uncle Tub Skelton out in Indiana he used to say goodnight to. And my grandmother's name was Skelton as a maiden, uh, maiden name, and she had a brother they called Uncle Tub, lost out in Indiana someplace. <laughs> they hadn't seen him for years. And I wrote Red and said, do you think we could be related? Well, I got a call back from Red. He says, well, frankly, he says, I don't know, but I had no relatives. I don't even know where my father is. But I just claim everything somebody says. And so one of the comedians, in the, he worked in burlesque, said, you probably got an old Uncle Tub Skelton out in Indiana. So he claimed him. So there was actually <laughs> was one. Yeah, there was one. It was my, it was my, my, my uh, grandmother's brother out right. there. I think he imbibed a little, and they lost him, you know. But that's okay. We all in Kansas. We all, you got to do something. You got to do something. Right? Come yeah. on, we don't care. You, that's either right. we go with Dorothy, you got to drink well, a little. Especially with Dorothy. Right. Yeah. right. yeah. Anyway, uh, that's uh, I grew up, and through a miracle, actually a miracle, overnight I created a game show because somebody said that was the one concentration that was on for like three hundred years before they finally said enough was enough. So. Yeah, twenty eight years. <laughs> They're talking about it again, I hear. But, really? Yeah. Would you get royalties again? Yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, I did. Uh, I was, uh, the first thing we have to do in life, which everybody who's responsible watching us now knows, your priorities are your family. And we have been, we're in a stress situation in life right now where we do not have a living wage for the people who cannot make more than that. We have a minimum wage. And on a minimum wage, we guarantee that if we build enough prisons, we'll be able to put the kids in there because their parents can't make a living. And those kids will go to prison. We don't mind spending uh, $30,000 for a cell and uh, $20,000 to keep, to keep uh, young people in jail. But we hate to raise the minimum wage till you can make a living. If you work your heart out, 40 hours a week, both parents, and you can't afford any babysitters, you've got last key kids, and we're training people to be... Uh, called irresponsible. They're just trying to survive. So that process has been going on a long time and that of course is part of what has to change and the exciting thing was after all these years of doing all kinds of things I realized I've been trained all my life to do what I do now. I've been on over a thousand talk shows. I have uh, uh, had the great deep pleasure of meeting people especially all over the United States to see that everybody's got big hearts. We just don't quite know how to handle the situation on the planet. I happen to know we've starved to death 300 million people since 1945, and we've had a 10% surplus of food on the planet. When you talk about food, that deals with my interest in hunger. So I took all my money I made out of concentration. My family and I got my family raised, and the rest of it, uh, I, I tried to stop world hunger. You can't put a Band-Aid on it. You have to change attitudes. Our, per our perspectives, our, our priorities have to change. And then I read in a little book called 
which I didn't want to read. But somebody puts it in your hand, I think when you get a book, you ought to read it because somebody might be telling you something. We had about 100 books a week, so it would be tough. But no, you, I don't you can't do it all, Alan. No, I don't. You can't do it all. No, right. Well, listen, I didn't like the but title. But some you feel that I yeah. understand, right? Right. I'm a member of no religious organization because I, I, that doesn't mean uh, religious organizations are worried about that. But I'm saying I've studied them all. I don't find any of them that are not exclusive. And that's not to put anybody down. Uh, I'll do that. Okay, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. No, uh, well, no. the truth we have to face. Everyone says uh, we're all so. we're all one. However, we're the right. only one. Right. And that, of course, if you're part of, if you come on to ours, then you're part of the world. Well, then we right. then we know you're one. Right. Exactly. But until that time, you're threatened right. with possibly right. going to hell, right. which there may, may not be such a place. We may discover that. Right. Matter, matter of fact, two summers ago, the Pope said that. I heard that. Can he I, be trusted? I don't know. He said a lot of things that I don't But he said, i got to tell you something. There's no heaven or hell on this planet except that which we create. I thought there'd be an yeah, explosion. Nobody has said that. Right. It exploded. Right. So I ran into in 1982, and since then I've been having the joy of my life, happened to be on Social Security, happened to know how to live on a shoestring because I produced shows all my life. And uh, so I live on my Social Security, have an old beat-up car. It got here tonight. Thank gosh it got here. Was I it always, a van? No, it's just an old beat-up oh. 1982 Toyota Celica. Oh. People steal it at night and give it back to me in the daytime. Right, no. I know. They say they don't want it. It's like <laughs> they don't want that. Though. Somebody kidnapped me as a kid and brought me back the next well, morning. My you, parents were pretty sure that it wouldn't last too Alan, long. Alan, that's why you're, the, you're a miracle. You're, right, I know. You're, 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 you're doing this to bring love into the time that's that right. you felt anguish right, and, I know. and anxiety. Right, exactly. That's what we all do. Right. Everybody on this planet is divine. There is nobody ever walked this planet. That's the information I ran into. There's nobody who's ever walked this planet any better than everybody listening to me at this moment. And once we claim our divinity, then there will be not one son of God on the planet. There will be six billion sons and daughters of God on the That'd planet. That would be a nice place to hang out. Since we're all children of God, right. and we're going to move this world. And we have to remember that the poor people and the troubled people are the majority. When the new energy is here, the energy of cooperation, all we got to do, all we have to do is work together. And that's reuniting the split we made from the fact that we are all one. And we can change the world, and it's about to happen. I go a long time explaining something, and I'll probably divert myself from your question. Did I ask a question? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, you want to know how I got turned on. I got turned on when I read that at this time, on this planet, there are 63 perfect beings in etheric bodies. That's a whole new word to some people. Yeah, why don't you describe it? Etheric so? bodies means that it's the, it's, the, it's the lightest form of matter. Uh, children can see them. Dogs and cats can see them. But we're not that developed. But there are now 15 of those perfect people who watch over us at all times who are in physical bodies. They're on this planet. I know where several of them are. I've not, I have, well, frankly, they've appeared to me, two of them, but, uh, I, I, uh, but they appeared to lots of people and lots, lots of times. One of them was even on the Oprah Winfrey show, and I don't think she knows he was on there. <laughs> he was a homeless person when he was on. I, I, I don't want to tell that. There's many, so many stories we could talk all night, but they appear to us to give us an idea. Well, when you say they're perfect beings, you just described everybody as divine. So is yes. it that they... Well, we haven't manifested it so yet. So they are truly... They understand that? They experience that? How, how, yes, what's they the, came through the process called evolution where we continued to grow. You know, I, I told you I'm an idea man, you're an idea man. And I will tell you, it would be a very bad idea if there was just one lifetime when you could create anything you wanted to if you were omnipotent and omniscient. So why not create a, a perfect plan that you, you just keep trying till you get it? You know, and I love that idea. And that's exactly the way it exists, but we haven't learned it because we have been indoctrinated from people who like to control. And all people like to control. We have that trouble in our own relationships. And that is not what life's about. Our life is about... Uh, affirming people who say, I can do it, and I'll work with you to do it, and that's called sharing. And the, this, one of the great teachers who's back, came back July 19, 1977, uh, says, without sharing, there is no justice. And without justice, there is no peace. And without peace, there is no future. So share and save the world. 
I don't know if you've read Article 25 of the United Nations. Every 190 some nations joined the United Nations, signed that article. It says in essence what I discovered in this book I ran into in 1988, uh, that exact thing is going to happen when these teachers come out openly. There are now 15 of them openly on the planet and lots of the world leaders know it. The, one of the networks in the United States has agreed to put on one of these people. Pretty soon we'll probably show you a picture of one of these people. Uh, CNN flashed around the world. There's a picture of him at a big meeting. Uh, and uh, he appears always to people the way they'd like to see him. And he's not a religious uh, leader at all. He's an educator in the broadest sense. He says just what you said on your opening. Exactly, that's what he says. How could he say otherwise? Well, he couldn't, Al, <laughs> no, right. because you wouldn't be doing this show if you weren't being used by these wonderful people because your mind's open. As soon as we open our mind to the possibility that there could be, as you say, a heaven right here on earth, they use us to, to work with us because they cannot impose upon our free will. Our free will is sacred. Everybody's free will is sacred. Some people say, if you know these people, how come they don't just stop all the starvation? Because it's not their job. It's our job. They will counsel us. We can take advice or not. That won't bother them. They're not judgmental. They're not vicious. They're not angry. They're people like you and me, but they've got a much greater sense of humor than most of us have. And they will advise us soon. And you'll see it around the world. The network has agreed to put the, the leader of these people on whenever he wants to walk in and talk. And he will walk in and talk when we get into a difficult situation, which I will not describe here, but it'll be a situation difficult to some people. Two-thirds of the world will scream with joy. And when that half starts happening, he will appear on this network in the United States that has accepted him, and he will, he will give us such a message of hope. And from that time on, he'll go till we put him up on the satellite, and at, the, at that time, he will talk to six billion people at once in this world at the same time, but he won't say a word. He will do it telepathically. They will call that celebration in the future. Um, what's that thing that happened when they did that way back in the Bible? It's that time everybody heard voices uh, at the same time with this message. It just lost the, lost the name of it. But it's a celebration of the fact that, that all of us, when we, when, we, when we manifest the love of God, can reach anybody. And he will say to you and me, as you just said tonight, we are all brothers and sisters. There is nobody any better who's ever walked this planet than your potentiality has for you. It's inside you. Bring it out. We spend all our time asking somebody else to make us happy. The truth is the person we sleep, live with, sleep with 24 hours a day is us. And we will not make ourselves happy. We look for somebody else to do it. And that's how we get treated. We Treat other people, we teach other people how to treat us by the way we treat ourselves. It's a trite saying, it seems, but it's so true. Once you love yourself, you bring loving people into your life and say, I know how you like to be treated. You like to be loved. It Who starts, doesn't? It starts with you and me. Right. It starts with us. You and know what that. was that book? I mean, you've been the teasing, book I, teasing well, with the book. You mentioned well, it eight times. Well, everybody out there, thousand, millions of people, and then wait the guy's book. Why won't he say? One of the reasons I haven't said the name of the book is because I, we have a misinterpretation of what the Christ is. Well, go ahead. We got plenty of time. Yeah. Go ahead. Straighten it out, will you? The, the, the book's name is The Reappearance of the Christ and the Masters of Wisdom. And, uh, it, and that's by Benjamin Krem, right? Yes, it's by Benjamin Krem, but he never professes to have the ideas. They come from these 63 perfect people whose job is to let us know that the Christ is a, a person who manifests perfect love. And in fact, in 2,500 years from now, there's a fellow named John that you've read about in the Bible. He will then be in the Christ position. But everybody on this planet is a, representing, a representative of love, as you said. We just don't see our own power, but we will be affirmed in seeing it in the future. And we need this kind of teachers. They're going to be on the nightly newscasts once they show uh, much, much stronger even than those uh, car chases in L.A. And, you know, they will... Wow. They, yeah, I they'll mean, push it's those off? Big. No, I It'll don't know. That's, you're pushing it, buddy. Yeah. Now, I don't. Well, that's the first book Perfect I Perfect masters, one thing, but car chases. <laughs> car chases? This How are you going to take your eyes off of that? <laughs> you know, it's so simple. All they got to do is let the guys run out of gas and have a policeman at every exit. And then we had to kill each other trying to catch him. But that's okay. We'll figure that out in time. Yeah, well, okay. uh, a lot of police watch this show, so I think we got it straightened out. Well, now. They, 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not talking against anybody. I'm just no, saying I'm, there are ideas that are better than uh, no, we don't talk the way we just anybody. conducted our election. There's right. a lot of ideas ready, yeah. better. <laughs> Everybody kind of knows that this election didn't go perfectly. Oh. <laughs> It was a strange set of circumstances. Well, I'll tell you something. It's not disconnected with what I'm talking about because there is an energy called, uh, from a being called the avatar of synthesis pouring into this planet. That's why we're, so, uh, we're feeling this. We don't quite know what it is, but it, the law of cause and effect is the same as the law of gravity. It works. So the avatar of synthesis is now bringing in the energy to balance everything. Just as bad as it is right now, that's how good it'll be before terribly long. But we have to go through the change of consciousness to get there. Most of us do not like change. So we hold on to the past, which failed in all the voting precincts. And we hold on to the things we used to do. But how is there ever going to be evolve evolution unless we try some new things, which the young people look at, see we're not trying it, and they get dis disillusioned. And they are more highly developed than we are. They just haven't been able to manifest what they know. And they will in time when these teachers come out. You nod because you're listening. And yeah, I, it's beautiful. I, 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 go, boy. I, well, I can go forever, but I know <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't want to push you on time, so watch No, me. no, well, I'll let you know. Okay. I'm, I'm not bashful. One of the things is that do it, I follow the miracles. I'm called a modern miracles reporter. I gave myself that moniker because you can remember it a little bit because I am fascinated with them because every religion on this planet is being, this is a wake-up call, the crosses of light. They're, uh, uh, where are we? Santa Barbara. I can show you 60 miles from here if you want to call uh, uh, Alan sometime and say, I'd like to know where that is. There's a place you can go and see these crosses of light. If you go at a full moon, you see, the, you see a, a simple house. And if you look in where I tell you to look, you look up and the full moon, that cross will go up 40 to 60 feet in the air. Magnificently beautiful. And it's a healing cross of light emotionally, spiritually, and sometimes physically. They've been happening all over the world, generally to poor people. There are only five churches on the planet that I know of that got them, and three of them are black churches who are more spiritual than the others. Churches don't get them too much because people fight over things, but when you poor person's home, they're just trying to survive. So they get them by the thousands around the planet, and they get them in their bathroom windows. And I said, I said uh, to one of the people who knows, a man named Benjamin Krim who's been carrying this story around the world for 25 years now, uh, Benjamin, how come the master, what do the masters say why they put them in bathroom windows? He said they got a great sense of humor. Everybody goes there, they're yeah, going to yeah. see them. You, you can't miss it. No. You, yeah, no. You know, and, you, and you're going to be there a while. Well, and you, some people are, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Depends on whether you use natural uh, substance. Natural for child. Yeah, <laughs> natural. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So, so I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the crosses. The, the crosses of light are not, if you look at them carefully, are not Christian crosses, but Christians respond strongly to them. Uh, the the uh, uh, UFOs are connected with this. We think we're the only people out there. No. We came off a planet 18 and a half million years ago, our mindset, came off that planet to go into animal man as it grew, to then make a heaven here on earth. As you said, we can do it and we will. We'll be amazed what we do. I'm watching the time because I'm so conscious of time. Don't you worry. All I'll, right. I'll take care of the time. We, I'm, we, we, I'm great on time. Uh, so, the, so the Christians see the crosses of light. They see the Madonnas weeping and crying. And that's the only one I can prove scientifically. Any Madonna that weeps blood. I've told the press this a hundred times because we were told that this is a way to prove it's a miracle. If you'll check the blood on the Madonna that cries blood, there will be no blood platelets in it. That's why it runs all the time. If it had blood platelets, it would clot and stink. You'll only smell roses, which is the, the hallmark of Mary, the mother of this teacher, Jesus, saying, my son is back. Pay attention because we have to do some work. When he left, he said, feed my sheep and we're starving millions. Right. Okay, well, maybe uh, we'll take the time now to do Randy's second set. It's called The Great Invocation. Uh, the song was written by Randy far back and theoretically as from what uh, Buddy and, and Randy told me the words came from a uh, from the world teacher himself the the new Christ who I guess is called Maitreya uh, and it's called the great invocation 
Uh, it's going to be performed by Randy, and he's also the transmission meditation coordinator. And I think maybe in the second half we'll talk about transmission because that's the tool to have that experience. It's so. an amazing thing given to us by all 63 masters. My tray had projected it to us. Okay, so Randy's going to do the great invocation. Take it away, Randy. The point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. The center which we call the race of man. Let the plan of love and light work out, and may it see the dark where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Let Thank you very much. So we're back on the set with Buddy. So why don't you describe the transmission meditation? That's a tool. Yes. Okay, talk about it a little. Many, many people are becoming aware of the fact that meditation is a very important part of our life, especially in this stress-filled world. I mean, just we want to just talk physical health and emotional health. A little time spent quieting down is valuable to anybody. You don't have to believe anything about religion or believe anything about God or love, you just need to calm down sometime, and it's hard to find a way to do that anymore. And so the Master's recognizing that uh, we now have people going to be awakened to the fact of how important they are, created something so powerfully wonderful that you can sit in a wheelchair or on your deathbed and help change the world in the process while you do me transmission meditation. I, I, I have a simple little thing. I, I always try to simplify because it fits my mind. Uh, and I say, what the heck, why not try it? H-E-C-K. Here's what happens if you do transmission meditation. Actually, you don't do the meditating. You just offer your body willingly to be used by these 63 perfect people who are constantly bombarding us with help. But it bounces off of us because we're not aware. 
So we become the transformers. They send their energy through us and then put it out in the world where they want it. And that's what's causing a lot of things. It brought down the Berlin Wall, and you don't have to buy this in the short time I have to talk about it, but it brought down the Berlin Wall. It uh, stopped the Cold War. It got Mandela out of prison. It uh, started... What's the, the it? The it did? The energies that are being used by Maitreya in a form that those of us on this planet can feel and use and understand. And it goes to people who are more highly developed than we just do most of these things like a Mandela and stuff. But they understand, clearly. The world leaders know all about this person uh, because they've met with him many times. He will not impose upon the free will, but the world leaders are still saying, but, what but do I do? But don't you think what you did in the vibration you were putting out all those years and the vibration <laughs> of the people doing this show and all the guests also added to that energy that brought the Berlin Wall down? Well, there's no doubt about that. But you had to get one person who understood how to make the initiation that brought down the, let's just go to the Cold War. Right at the time we were calling those evil people we called the Russians at that time, our president did. At that time, this teacher appeared to uh, Mr. Gorbachev. So Mr. Gorbachev, we happen to know you're very highly developed. You know that you're thinking, your, your country's thinking of throwing bombs at the United States, and the, and the United States will throw them back. You know that, don't you? He said, yes, I know. He said... Uh, he was a very shrewd leader. Yes, he was. And he yes. said, he said, um, uh, this teacher said, why don't you offer to stop the Cold War and see what happens? Well, he offered, and immediately we accepted. Why? Because we knew that as soon as any of us who have that many bombs start throwing, the other person will throw back, and that's the end of this planet. Wouldn't be a good thing. It wouldn't be a good thing. No. So that's energy uh, of awareness that is being put out here gradually comes to enough people's minds who are open. Where they goes all the time, I don't know. I'm not that wise yet. But we all are potentially that wise. As we evolve, they, were, they use us. As you evolved, they gave you this idea for this show, and you're doing something in the United States that nobody else is doing, and I cannot commend too highly because I have seen almost everything on these kinds of things. To combine music, which is being pushed out of the nighttime shows, and putting music into your show, what a simple, marvelous idea. People love music. It's the universal language, and you have it on every show you do. I love that, because other people are forgetting the things that really communicate with the masses. So, in the process of doing transmission meditation, one, you get some healing immediately every time you sit down every week. If you just do it for an hour, you get some healing because they adjust your chakras, our energy centers, and then most of what's wrong with this is we're out of balance. But they balance them perfectly so they can pour energy through, and you work as a transformer. They break the energy down. They say, don't you send it any place because you might send it to Bosnia, and we may be pulling it out of there so people won't, wouldn't want to fight. So let us do it, but in the meantime, you're helping us. Would you please help us? That's you get some healing when you get transmission This meditation. is the H-E-C-K. H-E-C-K. Let's okay. go to the E. Evolution. We're all trying to evolve until we have a better life. Now, one of the things you have to recognize before you'll, you'll really go for that is the fact that we, the masters say we've got it backwards. We're not people with souls. We're souls with a multitude of bodies through the centuries until we reach the point where the pull of materialism starts leaving us, and then we're ten lifetimes away from perfection. Want to become a master? Let the pull of, of materialism slowly uh, recede from your life and you will be taken care of, but you will have a purpose and, you're, and the purpose is worth gold. You want gold? Get into the business of helping change the world for better. So we've got evolution. You get 20 years evolution out of this if you really, each year that you do this, maybe just for an hour, if you really do it with purpose. The third thing is C. You get commitment. Most people will not commit to anything, not even for an hour. They keep moving. What, what do I do next? What do I do next? What do I do next? And that is not going to do anything. But commitment for one hour a week to let these people break down energy, they're behind you. The my, brightest people on the planet are behind you. And the final thing is K, H-E-C-K. You can literally burn up karma. Most of us are fighting past lives. That's why we don't understand why these troubles keep coming up. We have created them. And now we have to work them out. That's what transmission meditation does. It takes three people. It takes no money, no training. You just go sit down and do it. Focusing here, so we lift our astral nature. This is where it hurts when you get hurt. Lift it up here to the middle where we have the greatest computer ever created. 
And there we start getting mentally polarized. So they have you focus through here while you're sitting there letting the energy come through you. And gradually you become brilliant. That's what transmission meditation is about. Believe that or not. Have to try it to prove I'm wrong. <laughs> and, and have you tried other meditations as a po I mean, because there are a lot of different yes. meditation yeah, techniques. Yeah, but the interesting thing is these masters don't waste a second. They would not have created transmission meditation if any other meditation did what the four things I just told you. Meditation is to get us in contact with our soul. Our soul is perfect. That's who you really are. You're perfect, but you're trying to manifest through this dense physical so we can do what you said. Bring heaven here on this planet. It has to be done through human beings. Right. We have to do the work. The other meditations always touch you, put you in touch with your soul. So there's nothing wrong. They're wonderful. You can do that and still do this. But this is the, not your meditation. It's the activity of the masters who need your help. Will you please give us an hour a week so that we can help change the world so we stop the starvation, so we get people an education, so we can put out in the world ideas that are bigger than we have been manifesting. And you don't have to buy any of that. But don't do away with your other meditation. They encourage that. But this one has never been done. That's why they created it. Why would they waste their time creating it? Well, it could be. I mean, the possibility is for those people who weren't drawn to the others. So everybody well, needs to be drawn to something. I mean, that's just a possibility. Well, that's a good, that's a good point. But it's, uh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't create something. They might as well say, just do your meditation. But they didn't. But not everybody would. I mean, and if with yeah. free will, I mean, I mean, different masters come in different physical forms because some people are drawn to different physical well, forms. Well, that's right. If you see these pictures, I mean, maybe you've already shown those up here. This is the way the people in Nairobi and Kenya would look. Uh -huh. Who would think this person would look? They looked at this person. This was flashed around the world on CNN because the press was alerted that this woman, Mary Akatsa, uh, that's a little woman on that picture. Who's you know, actually, we had that video on. Oh, did you? Oh, we had that a while back, but I mean, not everybody watches every minute yeah. of every show, surprisingly enough. Yeah. I mean, there are a few people who probably they missed don't. it well, on Earth, I would say. So you could describe yeah. it again. <laughs> well, Mary, but we did show the whole video, oh, which is beautiful. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Well, Mary Akatsa was a great healer over in Nairobi and Kenya. And she got word in her mind that somebody very uh, healing, a person of a healing nature, was going to be in the audience the next day. She, she invited all of her most ill people to come. 6,000 of them gathered. She notified CNN. She notified the press in uh, Nairobi. The press did a story on this. And they watched everything happen that I'm telling you. And it happened. This was flashed around the world for several minutes, these pictures. And, uh, and this person suddenly appeared right in the middle of the people. And he spoke in Swahili the perfectly. He, they can do anything, these masters, anything. He looked the way they would expect him to look because they're expecting what they call Jesus Christ. Of course, Christ is not the last name of Jesus, but that's what we've started calling him because he was uh, in the Christ position for three years. And he was worked through by a person even... Uh, they worked closely together, this person called Maitreya, who's not a member of any religion. He's an educator. Well, at, at the time, Jesus wasn't a member of any religion either. Well, that, that's correct. That's one I mean, thing. masters aren't the members of religions. Religions come after, isn't that generally yes, the way it Yes, people put, put up some things so we can frame it, so we can understand it, and somewhat so we can control the people that get interested. Well, isn't it just people aren't having the experience? So, you know, once you're not having the experience, all hell breaks loose. It just... Yeah, yeah this is such a, a deep... You're so right. You're so, you're so right. So this... Uh, 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 the. I, you asked me a question, and I hope I finished it, the answer. The other thing I keep going back to is the miracles, because a lot of people would like to hear maybe about the miracles. Let me tell you the miracles that make the, the Hindus believe their teacher is here. A person who's very, very poor in India woke up with the idea that he should go to the temple, take a teaspoon of milk, hold it up to Ganesh, I think they pronounce it, I'm from Kansas. That's, yeah, I know, I'm from Brooklyn. So yeah, okay. We got a problem, we, we with, have problems. We, with India Day. You should hear, well, we have Indian guests on the show, I pronounce them, it's like they start well, trembling. Okay, but that gives them a chance to grow if they right, no, are understand. patient with us. I give them, I give them a chance yeah, to that's grow. Right. Everything's, everything has got some good in it. Right. Uh, the, you know, you know. I always say to people, I, I teach a lot in the drunk driving program because I love all the people. They're more sensitive. Hey, don't put people down in drunk, who are drunk drivers. They are more sensitive than most of the people I've met on the planet. 
And the problem with them is they get bombarded with the terrible things going on and they self-medicate sometimes. Nobody's ever chosen to be an alcoholic. Alcoholism chooses people, so get off punishing people. They punish themselves enough and love them and point out their good qualities and maybe they'll change. Nobody can change them, but uh, you can help them change themselves. Got to put that in because I work with, yeah. worked with over 10,000 in my life because my sister died of it. Died yeah. of alcoholism? Yeah, I never saw her take a oh. drink in her life. You probably think differently if she got run over by a drunk driver, but that might be well, another, that's a whole uh, other. If story. she got run over by a drunk driver, she probably couldn't think. So we're okay. Yeah, there, I'm teasing you. No, I understand. I'm teasing you. No, it's okay. The the Hindus saw this little man uh, walk into the temple, take his teaspoon of milk, hold it up to God Ganesh, which is a little elephant, and uh, it's just a little elephant statue that's like a holy figure in right, that religion, right. right? Okay. And it's the god of prosperity to a lot of them, and. As they held a teaspoon to the, to the little uh, elephant's trunk, boom, the milk disappeared. Well, he ran screaming out and told everybody within four days in India, southern India, there was no milk left because they'd been taken to all the statues and the statues was what they called drinking the milk. The statues didn't drink the milk, but when you hold it up and touch these this statues, the masters made the milk disappear. And, but, uh, pe but people who but think the they... the statue kept growing, so it was helpful. <laughs> no, so, well, <laughs> had, good, help it, had good teeth. Right, lots, yeah, lots right. Of calcium. Right. <laughs> right. Well, they got the to, high cholesterol. Oh, so yeah, then. oh, you got to watch. Well, there wasn't any cream in it. Right, which is okay. Milk. All right, okay. it was non-fat. I, non I worry about non elephants, Dad, uh, yeah, please. Oh, I do, too. I all right, love, I love go on. We're okay. being silly. So, well, but maybe there's some <laughs> right. tr truth in all this silliness. Uh, got to take the pressure off of people hearing this stuff for the first time. Right. I, I deeply respect you if you're still listening. So hang on. And you're awake. Yeah. Come on now. It's hard to go to sleep on this, but you will leave. <laughs> no, we will. have a lot of people who use the show Turn as the a buttons. sleep aid. So well, I mean, all right. All yeah, right. No, it's helpful for people. So they believe maybe their God of prosperity has said, finally, the poor people are going to have something to eat. And they think their, their God, uh, which is called Krishna, might be back. Well, from my information, they're correct. And, uh, and also the, 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 the so-called Christ Jesus is back. He's in northern Rome. He's been there since uh, 1994. He has two disciples in the Vatican. Actually, the Vatican sent two disciples to hear this teacher in London when he invited all the religions to come and, and meet him. They came back and said, we think this is the Christ. And Pope has said, well, there is a, a, a great... Tool. I'm the Pope, so this can't be no Christ. It's like, it's like that old joke. Who was the guy who told uh, all those jokes with uh, Lenny Bruce? Yeah, said, when oh, the, Lenny Bruce. the Pope, you know, if, if Jesus really, they kick him out. Of, you know, what are you coming to with all these beggars and crap? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lenny had a viewpoint, didn't he? Yeah, he did have a viewpoint. We all have a right to a viewpoint. Right. That's what our country's about. So let's take the Jews. They've been expecting the return or the Messiah to finally show up. Their tradition is when a red heifer, when the tenth red heifer is born in Israel, the my, the uh, what's the what do they call their uh, Messiah is here. Well, in about two or three years ago, full page in Newsweek magazine, it reported on this tenth red heifer. It was born. Wait, and, in how, how long a time frame? I mean, forever? I mean, was no. it? No, it was just born, and, and I don't know if the ever still there, but and three years ago, it was born. A beautiful full picture of this red heifer, born. The fundamentalist scholars of the Jewish tradition know that's the, that's the, uh, tr uh, the expectation for the Messiah to appear. And so they've kept it quiet. And the reason they've kept it quiet is that the next part of that tradition is as soon as it's born, you're supposed to rebuild the temple. Where's the temple? Right in the heart of the peace process. We've, seen, yeah. we've seen us arguing over that right. 34 acres of land out there, right. Right, willing to kill each other over 34 acres of land. You get out here in the desert out here. No, we can, we kill, we'll kill each other for less than that. Yeah, but you know, 34 is just well, 34, <laughs> random. 34 <laughs> is okay if you call it holy. You can kill people. So... That's what we do there while the, uh, and we're afraid they will build that, but they haven't mistaken the temple of the living God, if you check very carefully what all the teachers have said, is you, you, everybody. We are the temples of the living God. We are all children of God, and the temples of God is within us. So it's not a literal thing, but we take it literally. So that's the Jewish, uh, Jewish approach. I'm part Cherokee Indian, so I like the one about the, the uh, white buffalo. And the tradition was that there's a man came around some uh, years after uh, Jesus was crucified, and he came to America and he taught uh, the Mormons, uh, the Indians and the Mormons and a lot of other people, uh, something about love. And as, they, as the teacher left, they walked away, the teacher turned into a, a woman, 
and, and then into a white buffalo calf and disappeared. So the tradition is when the white buffalo calf comes back, our teacher will be here. The white buffalo calf was born in uh, southern Wisconsin. They call it Miracle. And uh, it turned from a white calf into, uh, which is the white race, turned from a white calf into a red calf, which is the Indian race, into a uh, uh, dark brown calf, which is uh, the, the darker race on the planet, races on the planet, and turned into a yellow calf. And I was talking about this in Palm Springs one day. And turned into like a hamburger. And, no. <laughs> well, well, maybe literally because somebody stood up and said, did you hear on the news today what happened to the calf? I said, no. They said somebody killed it. Seriously? Yes. So the calf's dead. So you knew the humans would turn it into a hamburger. They well, had to. could have been. Yeah. I don't know. I don't oh, know. I but, I was, I was but only the, kidding. No, well, lower I know, it doesn't bother me, Eddie. No, I, 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 I got a sense of humor. That's why I worked the skeleton show. I wouldn't right. get on there without it, I'd tell you. Right, I would say. <laughs> but, uh, but that sign is here. So what you're saying is that basically all the religious prophecies of all the religions and all the... They're the, all expecting somebody to return. And it's, and it's here. And it is now here. And they will find that out. And they're already believing it from their viewpoint, many people, not all the people. Because the prophecies are being fulfilled. They're all being fulfilled. You take the Muslims, they get in their vegetables, their uh, uh, eggplants and tomatoes, they get Allah exists, Muhammad is the messenger, written in Arabic, and they, they've been cutting them off, been in the newspaper, been in the magazines. That's the sign that they, maybe their teacher's back. Wait, say that again? You, they cut open a, They cut a, open a, a, an eggplant or they cut open a tomato and it may say Allah exists or it may say Mohammed is the messenger. In These, the seeds or just? In the seeds. The oh, seeds are written in Arabic. <laughs> in Arabic. They've got the pictures of them in all the major magazines, but we just don't catch them because they don't put them all together. Right. Let's take the crop circles. Crop circles are marvelous. People say that, well, we fooled you with that one. They tell me every time I get on a broadcast, except here so far. They said, well, that was a fake. Yes, what was a fake was you reported on two guys that got paid by a, a tabloid newspaper to go out and tromp around the field, tying things on their feet, and you showed a lousy crop circuit. You sold it to the United States. We printed it, and every person in the press says, hey, that was a fake. I said, no, you didn't follow the story. If you'd check, you'd see these guys got paid, and that's not what it's about. There are no footprints around the crop circles. In 1991, I sent you a whole page of those crop circles. You see how beautiful they were. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of them. Yeah, but a lot of people haven't, and they don't realize they keep producing all the time. Why are they now all around the world? Because they're creating a grid on this planet for the thing that's coming in in the next few years called the energy of light. That will break the back of the oil cartel because unlimited free energy will be given to every person on the planet as a human right. And that will stop the fossil burning, that will stop the pollution from the oil, stop the wars from the oil, and we're starting on our way. They cannot give that to us until we're more responsible because you saw, they saw what we did with the atom bomb, and they had to be very careful. And also, I mean, there's some theory that Atlantis had a similar problem in Lumeria. They ended up getting those extraordinary powers. We blew it up. Well, what happened in Atlantis, of course, was the masters gave us all this stuff, and we weren't very evolved, and so we blew the heck out of ourselves. We're a strange bunch. You know, what's interesting to me is that, you know, how people think they know all this much, you know, about what's possible, what's not, the crop circles are not possible, when the whole experiment, we're hurtling through space on a ball. Right, and we're upside down. Just and to think that, you know, that, that anything, that the crop circles would be impossible in that yeah. context. Well, they're made by space people. Right. They're here. They stopped us from getting millions of people getting killed when the Chernobyl meltdown came. They just turned it off the other day. Do you, I don't know, maybe you noticed yeah, that. Yeah, I did see that. Chernobyl meltdown was stopped by the space people who are making the crop circles, setting up this grid for the energy of light coming, and they have implosive devices, and they kept us from dying. 50 to 100 to 200 people have died, and that should have killed millions. Up in that jet stream, swinging around the world, unlimited radioactivity but not that many people kill. All right, well, you know, I think on that note, there's still a lot of chance for us to have a lot of love and a lot of joy, and we're, we're really being helped now, and there's just a lot of energy out there for us to have that experience. So, uh, you know, really, if you want any information about where Buddy's gonna be talking, or any information about the book, or, or uh, you know, Benjamin Krem's book, or where Randy is playing, he's gonna be doing stuff around Santa Barbara, or the transmission uh, meditations that he teaches, please call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. Good night, God bless you. It's all available, the love is here. 
We love you. Good night.